influences. Um, what up? I'll just bring my share screen back up. Um, you may recognize this chart. Do you want to explain uh, who made it and how they made it? Uh, Oh, uh, yes. The, yeah. These are my favorite researchers, Drs. Raubenheimer and Simpson, um, in your part of the world. And these guys have been researching protein and the protein leverage hypothesis of obesity for right. decades. And what they realized is that basically over the entirety of the obesity epidemic, protein percent of the diet has gone from about 14 percent down to 12 and a half percent. And that's basically more than enough to explain uh, a big percentage of the fact that everyone's overeating. And they also highlighted the fact that protein is the most expensive macronutrient mm -hmm. by far. This is a graph of every food in the grocery store based on its macronutrients. And you can see that if you increase fat and carbs in a food, it's practically free. So like, it's all about mm -hmm. the protein. The, the, price of a food is just linear with the grams of protein in it. So, you know, you buy your, your happy meal, you buy your hamburger meal and like large fries, large soda, that's like 10 cents, but yeah, you yeah, put yeah. an extra patty on that burger. It's like $2. So like, it's all about the protein. And that's why protein dilution is, is purely economic. The economics mm. are huge here. Protein is the most expensive macronutrient by a mile. It's the most expensive to produce. It has a lot more logistical factors, refrigeration and transport and cooking and shelf life. And there's so many things about protein that make it so much more expensive. You know, cereal grains have a shelf life of like 100 years. And refined carbs and fats, like sugar and flour and oil, can sit on the shelf mm. for decades. And the the... Uh, the basically the profit margin on like a box mm. of cereal is off the charts, but, but yeah. m things like meat and things with a shelf life and refrigeration, the profit margin is really low and the cost is really high. Yeah. Is it any wonder they want to sell you plant-based burgers and you know, all the, it's the, the sugar and flour and oil is just so incredibly cheap, but it's so low satiety, low nutrient density all at the same time. It's terrible. And you can grab, you can draw a map of obesity and a map of poverty and they just line mm. up completely. And it's just really terrible and kind of sad. Yeah. And unfortunately, like the, the farm subsidy, big agriculture system just propagates it and supports that in a lot of ways. So we're, we're subsidizing the foods that are the cheapest and make us most obese. So yeah. Right. Scary situation. So, um, yeah, th th this is this is essentially the solution to hyperinsulinemia, um, hyperphagia, um, energy toxicity, insulin toxicity is is to prioritize foods with more um, protein percentage, higher protein percentage, and try to limit those. So I suppose one thing that a lot of people don't, I, I didn't get when trying to explain it, is that it's not about eating more protein necessarily. It's just a higher percentage of protein so you don't necessarily have to eat massive amounts of protein to to get better satiety and that may be a bad thing because often comes with you know, if you eat a, more butter to get your protein you're going to be eating a lot of calories so it's about dialing up slowly progressively you, you keep trying to emphasize that in all your interviews it's not about eating, going to the 50%, 60% protein. It's just about, you know, are you at 12? Let's go to 15. And if that doesn't work for you, let's go to 20 maybe and just slowly titrating that up. Right, right, exactly. And and this is my, this is actually my favorite study anywhere on anything. This is at Raubenheimer and Simpson's amazing meta-analysis of I think 116 studies where humans ate ad lib amounts of calories and they looked at the macronutrients involved and realized that going from the highest ad lib energy intake to the lowest was really just a hundred percent linear about the protein percentage and the carb and fat uh, had very little to do with it. The fat uh, quantity had almost nothing to do with it whatsoever. It was mostly protein, um, mm. very dramatic, very dramatic study. And the highest ad lib energy intakes are at super low protein and high carbs. And the exact opposite for the lowest energy intake, super low carb, high protein. And it's just such an amazing, amazing study. I mean, I think this is pure gold. I don't know why. I, I don't, you know, I've read huge 
huge articles on obesity in the medical literature. And they'll talk all about all the various forms of bariatric surgery, all of the weight loss drugs. They'll talk all about um, the, the gastric balloons and the different crazy devices. And they'll talk about all of this stuff and nobody's talking about this. It's just crickets. And I just don't understand it. It's very, uh, I, I have intentionally not gotten board certified in obesity medicine because I'm disgusted by the fact that you can have a whole obesity week and nobody mentions this shit at all, at all. It's all about drugs and surgeries and devices. And it's, it's like, okay, I can have a bulimia device implanted in my stomach and they'll talk about that for a whole day at obesity week and no one's talking about this. I mean, it's just upsetting. Yeah. I um, th This is one of my favorites that it just explains really clearly what the issue is. It's that combination of fat and carbs together. It's not the extreme carb or the extreme fat. And I, I love that. It's just, you know, so simply, you, and you keep on rabbiting on about, you know, you can explain this, you can explain why vegan, plant-based vegans are really skinny, and you can explain why people on low carb are really skinny, you can explain why um, lean bodybuilders are, are shredded, all with this paradigm, it's just the simple Occam's razor of, of nutrition, really. Yeah, yeah, I love this one. I'm I'm laughing because um, this was before I sold the book, and I was still paying off my student loans. And uh, th this graphic I could have bought on like Shutterstock for ten dollars, <laughs> but instead I just downloaded like a ha a hacked one off the internet, and it's just all pixelated, and I <laughs> I just like erased the watermark off of it. And so this uh, is like an illegally stolen low resolution graphic. Which <laughs> I stole from you. <laughs> it's just like it's so embarrassing. Oh man. Yeah, man. You, you you should pay for the uh, pay for the background image now and uh, use it. So I yeah, need to. Every, everything you talk about just aligns with what we see in our analysis of um, the the data from Nutrient Optimizer is that people who eat higher percentage of fat and carbs together the population intake is up here at about 75 eat more and as people reduce their energy from fat and carbs i mean really fat and carbs are both carbon carbon bonds in different sort of amount of bonding i don't know whether you're going to talk about it that you know, the biochemistry is not my strong point but you know carbs and fat are both energy uh, just in different uh, explosiveness i suppose Right. They're, they're all just carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in chains of high energy bonds. So hydrocarbons, which are fats, and carbohydrates, which are carbs, are all just chains of high energy bonds between carbons and car carbon, carbon, and carbon, hydrogen, all of which you just break down in your mitochondria kind of indiscriminately. Um, the only big difference between the two is how fast they burn mm. and how much they weigh. So uh, glucose burns six times faster. So if you're sprinting for your life, you're gonna burn 100% glucose because you can get energy from it. You can make ATP out of glucose six times faster than you can fat. So if you're just walking for 100 miles, you'll burn exclusively fat. But mm. if you're sprinting for your life for 60 seconds, you're gonna burn exclusively glucose. The other big difference is just glucose is water soluble and fat is absolutely not water soluble and ha they have to be ferried around your bloodstream in two entirely different ways and they're stored differently. Uh, glucose has to be stored as glycogen, which has a lot of water involved with it and it's very heavy. It's six times larger and heavier for the same amount of calories as fat storage. Mm. So fat is like super tiny and super light and totally dehydrated with no water Mm. and very slow burning. So you're just going to run off that forever and you can carry it around. But glucose is like this big, expensive, fast burning, but hard to carry around jet fuel type thing. Mm. And so they're, they're, your body wants both, but just a little bit of glucose because it's so hard to carry around. Mm. Yeah. So they're both energy, just in different forms for different purposes. And yeah, so protein to energy. Hey, so, um, mm -hmm. so the, the, the bottom line is, um, this is what you need to avoid. And um, and then, you know, I love this. Food quality determines food quantity. So the amount, what you eat determines how much you eat. And I love that you talk about front-loading protein and nutrients and then sort of topping up.
you don't initially know why you're hungry, but if you know, make sure you get your protein first, and if you need to, you can top up on some energy because you still need energy, but most people are getting way too much, which leads to all the issues. Right. Yeah. 